Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the program. It is my delight to meet with you today. We've had a recent number of people call in and saying that they've been listening to the program and those kind of calls and emails just encourage all of us here. And thank you so much for listening and for just the encouraging notes and phone calls. Well, right now, my Bible is sitting open to the book of Leviticus and chapter 21. If you can, reach over, get your own copy of God's Word and join me there, Leviticus chapter 21. Get something on which you can jot some notes as well, please. Now, as we go through our time today, I will be encouraging you to get a free sample packet of our English gospel tracts. My announcer will give you three ways by which you can give to us your name and your mailing address. He'll do that at the end of the program. So have pen and paper ready to jot down our contact information. I'm going to highlight one of the gospel tracts here in just a a moment, but I want to lead us into our Bible study time this way. There's an old saying that says this, like father, like son. And we all understand what that means. Generally speaking, children will pick up traits from their parents, both father and mother, and they're going to pick them up, both good and bad traits. And like every other proverbial statement, this statement is generally true, but not always true. But let me change that proverb a little bit. How do you respond when I put it this way? Like pastor, like church, like pastor, like church. Do you think that that statement is generally true? I frankly think that it is. Many an old preacher told me when I was headed into the pastoral ministry that a local church will take on the personality of the pastor after about three or four years of ministry there. Then the older men asked me and said, so Mark Smith, just what do you want your local church to look like in three years? Well, beloved, that was a sobering question for me. Well, today here in Leviticus chapter 21, we're going to see some priests with handicaps. Now, I should say they could have been priests, but their physical handicap prevented that. Now, tell me, are there any spiritual handicaps that will stop a present-day man from being a pastor, even if he has the call of God on his life? That's where we're headed. Get your Bible and pen and paper, Leviticus, please, and chapter 21. I have a gospel tract in front of me. Now, a gospel tract is simply a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. This particular gospel tract is entitled, Two Kinds of Death. Two Kinds of Death. Let me read you part of what this tract says. It says this, Suppose you have before you a casket in which lies a body of a dead man. He is dead physically. You, sinner, are dead spiritually. He, the one in the casket, is separated from this world. You are separated from God. You say, I don't feel dead. Well, neither does the corpse. Your feelings have nothing to do with it. You don't have to feel dead to be dead. The corpse is dead in the coffin. You are dead in your sins. You're a sinner by nature. Some are Irish by nature, others Swedish, French, or English by nature. But all men are sinners, children of wrath by nature. It is as natural for you to sin as it is for a fish to swim. Oh, friend, the track goes on to there to give the solution to the fact that all are sinners and are dead in trespasses and sins. And the answer is in the person of Jesus Christ and his death, burial, and resurrection. Here's a great gospel 
tool to share the gospel with other people. Two kinds of death. Be ready when my announcer gives our contact information. Give us your name and address. We'll send you that free sample packet containing over 40 gospel tracts, each one different. This one, two kinds of death, will be in there. If you cannot wait to the end of the program, just go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. If your Bible's open to Leviticus chapter 21, I begin reading at verse 17. The Bible says this, Speak unto Aaron, saying, Whosoever he be of thy seed in their generations that hath any blemish, let him not approach to offer the bread of his God. For whatsoever a man he be that hath a blemish, he shall not approach a blind man, a lame, he that hath a flat nose or anything superfluous, or a man that is broken-footed or broken-handed, a crooked back or a dwarf, or he that is blemished in the eye, or be scurvied or scabbed, or hath his stones broken. No man that hath a blemish of the seed of Aaron, the priest, shall come nigh to offer the offerings of the Lord made by fire. He hath a blemish. He shall not come nigh to offer the bread of his God. I'm going to stop right there with the reading. Yesterday on the program, I gave you my three-part outline for chapter 21. That three-part outline was this, verses 1 through 9. I titled it, The Soiled Leader, Spiritual Leader, The Soiled Leader. Then verses 10 to 15, The Special Leader. Those verses deal with the high priest. Then verses 16 to 24 talk about the sound leader leader, the sound leader. I'm referring to being sound in body. You see, the fitness for ministry was what is being emphasized here in verses 16 to 24. All of Aaron's sons were born to be priests. Some, though, were not going to be qualified due to a physical handicap. Now, right here and now, let me be quick to make this point. Verse 22 says that a son of Aaron that did have a physical blemish was not spiritually blemished. They could eat of the offerings brought to the tabernacle. They just could not make the offerings there at the tabernacle. Now, you may rightly ask, why was this so? And the answer is simply this. The Old Testament priests, like the Old Testament animal sacrifices, were all pictures. Jesus is the Lamb of God. And just as it took a perfect and sinless Jesus to die for the sins of the world, so it took a perfect Lamb, perfect physically, to be a picture of the Lamb of God, which is Jesus. Well, the Old Testament priests, especially the high priests, were also pictures of our eternal priests, again, that is Jesus Christ. The high priest took the blood into God's presence once a year on the Day of Atonement. He had to be clean and pure and physically perfect. Well, Jesus took his offering before the throne of heaven. He was perfect and thus a fit priest, high priest, to present our sin offering before God Almighty. If I were to turn over to the book of 1 Timothy in chapter 3 or to Titus in chapter 1, we're going to find there the qualifications for pastors or elders. Now, as I understand the scriptures, those words, pastor, elder, and bishop, those words there used for the key leaders in the local church, they all refer to the same office. There are reasons for using the different terms, but the different reasons here are not our focus today. When looking at the requirements for a pastor there in the New Testament, what you're not going to see in those lists there in Timothy or Titus, anything, you're not going to find anything about the pastor's theology. What they believe is really critical, but these two passages focus on the man himself. They focus on his home. They focus on his character. By the way, I keep using the term him as I speak about the pastor. Pastors and deacons in the local churches are to be men. Now, I realize that there are a lot of people that disagree with me on this issue, but you cannot fit the listed qualifications in your family. Uh, listing there unless you are a man. But I'm going to leave that and move on. 
Let me quickly remind us all of some of the spiritual handicaps that make a man unfit to stand in the pulpit or make him unfit to be a leader in the local church. If a person has a hasty temper, if a person has a heart of jealousy, if a person has a love of money, if a person does not have an or their family ordered correctly, if a person has a proud heart, if a person has a reputation in the community that is not good, these things disqualify a man from standing in the pulpit. By the way, there are some traits that a man of God needs to possess. The positive side, I want to mention just two of them here. The first one is this, a pastor must be gentle. A pastor must be gentle. Now, beloved, please understand that a pastor is himself a sheep before God, but he's been called to be a leader of sheep for God. And to do this requires great gentleness. You don't beat sheep, you lead sheep. The other trait that I want to mention is this, he must be apt to teach, A-P-T, apt to teach. This trait is talked about in 1 Timothy, is talked about in 2 Timothy, is talked about in the book of Titus. There is a growing number of local churches seeking pastors these days because there seems to be fewer men available than the need requires. Some local churches are just bringing in the next warm body that offers their services. Now, being apt to teach is not so much based upon a man's time spent in Bible school. I can tell you a number of men that I know of that are pastors that never went to Bible school, but they are apt to teach. So this idea of being apt to teach is not so much based upon a man's time spent in Bible school, but it is based upon a man's time spent in the Word of God and having the Holy Spirit teach him. There are too many pulpits where people are in them that are not apt to teach. In Leviticus chapter 21, there are some serious warnings given to the Old Testament priests that I think transfer and are applicable directly to preachers today. There are three warnings. I'm not the first person to spot these, but here are the three warnings that I think stand out in Leviticus chapter 21 that apply even today. Warning number one is this. Don't defile yourself. Don't defile yourself. Be clean in your heart and in your home before you step into the pulpit to be God's servant. Warning number two, don't defile God's name. Don't defile God's name. God's holy, then you and I who are pastors and leaders need to portray a holy life. And the third warning is this, don't defile God's house. Verse 23 talks about that. Don't defile God's house. Going to preach at church with a defiled life means you've defiled the house of God. So, after all this and seeing the seriousness of being a leader, whether in the Old Testament era or New Testament, then let me ask all of us, have we prayed for our pastor yet today? Have we encouraged our pastor as he teaches and preaches? If we have a pastor who is gentle and apt to teach, are we giving honor to that man? Oh, beloved, let's give honor to godly church leaders. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.